Bob joining us and, and taking a little bit of time out from the other dudes. It's uh, play. It's good to get it going. And I think it's uh, it'll be a fun conversation because I want to kind of start with with you growing up and and uh, not even just about boats, but just life. I mean, what did family look like for you growing up in, in North Carolina, right? Were you kind of all over the place? Because your dad was in the Marines. Dad was in the Marines, but he was in World War II. And uh, he was wounded, and, but he didn't make a career out of it. After he healed from his wounds, he went into the Army okay. and finished out his time in the Army. But we didn't move for that reason. The house that I was born in, my mom still lives there. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. and, and were you, you were on the water, I mean, the house in Oregon, or? Yeah, we, okay. we had a place at Pamlico, okay, Pamlico. Uh, on the Pamlico side, okay. and we had a place there that we visited quite frequently and, as a family. Not just one person, but as a family. Were you on the water a lot growing up as a kid? Or Absolutely. Were you, okay. And other things, I mean, were you a hunter? Uh, I know you love horses now, but what's what other hobbies and things did you Well, had? growing up was hunting and fishing. It's all we knew. Okay. And skiing. It's yeah. all we knew. And then as we got a little older, or as I got a little older, you know, I took an interest in flying, so I got my pilot's license. Really? I got scuba. I got certified for paddy yeah. as an assistant instructor. So. To, Water has always been in my life, mm -hmm. even today. Yeah. Even though we have horses, water's in my life, obviously. Yeah. How, how old were you when you got your pilot's license? Uh, I soloed when I was 26. And just something for fun, or did you yep. ever think about? Boyhood dream. Okay. Interesting story. Um, I collected model airplanes, and all of my planes that I collected were World War II vintage aircraft. You know, B-25s, B-17s, Corsairs, Spitfires. Came home one day, and we we grew up in a three bedroom house. Mm -hmm. So we had mom and dad, another bedroom, and my brother and I shared a room mm -hmm. in a one bathroom house. I came home from school. My brother and sister were not in school, and all of my planes, my model aircrafts mm -hmm. that had been built, were destroyed all over the patio. And I asked them, I said, "What are you doing to my models?" Well, we wanted to see if they would fly. So that was my dream, was to fly, in which I did. That's very cool. That's, uh, I, I thought about pilot's license once upon a time, but I have a very ADHD mind, and I'm always moving around. Did you find yourself, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of different areas of interest. Was it always just a passion, a moment, and kind of no. get into it? Or you... No, it was something that I knew that I was going to do one day. I knew, I knew that was one of my goals that I had set. And, and I achieved it. So, family growing up in a one bathroom house, yep. get to know each other very well, very closely. Pretty much, especially with a sister like I have who is very attractive, and my brother and I with girlfriends and she with boyfriends, we figured out that we could take the one phone with a long enough cord and go into the bathroom and shut the door and get away from everybody. That was the only thing we could do. Mm -hmm. And y'all are still, I mean, still a very cohesive unit today. Yes. And so it, I bounce around a little bit, but I know that uh, some of this story is shared with some tragedy and sadness and those sorts of things. But right. can you talk through um, maybe where you went with your family and that process of losing your dad and, and everything and, and kind of give um, a little background to, to how we ended up with Rose Bay from that perspective? Sure, I'll start. Uh, let me go back to like 1946, okay. 45, 46, right in that time frame. Mm -hmm. Dad was wounded at Okinawa. He was shipped to Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor to San Diego, San Diego to North Carolina, which the Grove Park Inn was a Navy convalescent hospital during World War II. So he recovered from his wounds actually there from the war. By the time he recovered, the war was over, and, and he came home for a while to Rocky Mount, which is home. You know, it's where we, you know, our, our home is. Um, and my grandfather, Mr. Pennington, Roy Pennington, always went to Rose Bay fishing. That was his, that was his go-to place. And he happened to tell my dad one day, he said, uh, Cliff, he said, you're all healed up. He said, I think you need to get your mind off things. Let's go fishing. So they took off and went to Rose Bay fishing. And they were bottom fish, whatever bit, croaker, spot, trout, whatever, flounder. 
And Daddy was sitting in the back of the boat, and he said, Mr. Pennington, he said, I got a question to ask you. And he said, well, what, what's that, Cliff? He said, I'd like to marry your daughter. And my grandfather said, well, Cliff, he said, which one? I got three. <laughs> he said, the one I've been dating for so long. And he said, well, I think we can work that out. So that's how, that's really how Rose Bay came to be, was we're going back to the start of the family where mom and you know dad came yeah. together in Rose Bay. Yeah. Then as we were born and as we started growing up, we ended up at Rose Bay fishing many times, many, many times. And your brother was out of state for a little while, right? So he oh, was Oklahoma. Home. Yeah. And um, and I think I remember you telling a little bit of a story around because uh, you and your sister were still in North Carolina. Correct. And um, and and I guess you're. So you have this beautiful story about how the, the name and the brand and this thing and this bond comes together. But So you guys were um, sitting on a front porch or something to that degree. And, and Similar. It's something along that line. Correct. And uh, was it, I mean, you don't just fall into the boat building business. That, that typical Well, no, happen. you don't. Um, yeah, I've been in the boat business mm -hmm. for many, many years, over 20-some years. My brother missed the, the death of our father. Um, not by choice, by any means, and I, I want to make that clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in Oklahoma, and Dad was really sick, and I had called him one morning, Sunday morning actually, and said, Roy, I think if you want to see Dad, I think you need to get home. And he said, I'm on my way. He got the closest flight time-wise he could. He flew into Atlanta, called me in Atlanta. I said, he's still here, you know, but you need to get here. And by the time he landed in Raleigh, he called me just as soon as they touched down and Dad had just passed. So he made a promise. He, he, he made a promise and, and you have to, when someone makes a promise as big as this, you have to admire the promise. And he looked at me and he said, I will come back to Rocky Mount, or no, I'm sorry. He said, I will come back to North Carolina and make my home here. He said, because I will not miss the passing of our mother and I think it bothered him quite some time because my sister was there I was there my daughters were there uh, when dad died and dad was um, dad was a family hero and not just our you know just not for my yeah. brother and sister and I but the entire family he was a man's man a craftsman uh, boat builder he was um, a man of his word a man that spoke once you know, so. You learn a lot from him, I've, I've got to imagine. He taught us, you know, one, one of the stories he told my brother, he didn't tell me anything, but he told my brother, he said, make your living with your mind, not your hands. He said, because I've made my living with my hands. He worked for the railroad. And dad was a Marine, always was a Marine, you know, and one of the things that, that I don't like is to hear someone say ex-Marine or former Marine. Once you're a Marine, you're a Marine. Always, yeah. And right after high school, I joined the Marines. My brother just found out about it uh, maybe a year ago because I never talked about it. Now, I didn't make it through Vietnam and all of this. I, I had a sickness, but I, fooled, I had asthma and I fooled everyone and got in. And uh, the doctors down at um, Paris Island figured it out. but. They kept me in the reserve for you know for a while because of Vietnam, but Dad taught us how to um, respect each other, and once you give your word, that's who you are. And if you carry that, I think in life, and in, in, I don't know, our, our family was just so tight. Um, our mom was just a perfect mother. We had a perfect childhood. Yeah. I mean, we had a perfect childhood. So, family starts this endeavor of Rose Bay boats and, and coming together. Yeah, on the porch. And family business, as everyone knows, is never like the no. easiest thing in the world. No. Right? I mean, it's, it, you hear stories about don't ever go into business with your family. Cause it's and that's like, somewhat true to a point, <laughs> yeah. But we were, we were, we were in Oriental, mm -hmm. and we were all vacationing. We were all down for a week of vacation. And 
as I said earlier, my brother had moved back here to North Carolina, moving down to the Oriental. And he said, I think we need to go in business together because I was getting to the retirement age. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, we all need to go in business together. I said, who's all? He said, me, you, and Kathy. I said, doing what? He said, I don't know. We'll figure something out. Mm -hmm. I said, brother, I don't know but one thing. That's Bill yeah. Boats. That's all I know. I know Boats. That's it. I don't know anything else. Yeah. I said, you know, you, you, you went to college and Kathy's a nurse and I know how to sell a boat. Was it as simple as that? I mean, was it like yeah, that's it. and just go? That's it. And he said, uh, he said, well, do you know how to build a boat? And I said, well, yeah, we can get a boat built. Mm -hmm. Sure we can. We can build boats. Yeah. And, you know, here we are, what, 14 months later, I guess, 15 months later. Yeah, so you guys started in February of? We actually went public in February, okay. but we actually started the company, I think it was in September or October 2017. Okay. Which is, I mean, it's no joke getting these things up and No, it's no joke. And making everything happen. No, it's very, very hard. So where did you start? I mean, was it, was it, um, like, just coming out of your head and starting to build and, and have these ideas of what type of boat you want to build and, and yeah. what you want to put into it? Or? Yeah, we knew. Um, we wanted retro. We wanted to go back with some retro uh, appearance, just like our grandfather's boat with the spray rails. We knew we wanted a mooring bit because, you know, a lot of functionality of boats that were built 40, 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, Everything on that boat was built for a purpose, but now boats have become so streamlined that these functionality um, objects, if you will, or options have been removed from the boats. Well, that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to go back in time, but with a modern twist. And I think when you look at our boat, look at Rose Bay, you see well, that's an old boat, but it's not an old boat, you know? Yep. You, you know, we've changed some things, and. We, des you know, we designed the T-top the way we wanted our T-top design. We designed our leaning post the way we wanted our leaning post design. We designed the top cap the way we wanted it designed. The hull is a proven hull. The hull is yeah, 40 years old or more, but it's uh, changed, you know, in the interior. It's funny you say I, when I first saw your boat the first time, it's kind of like that old school, new school, <coughs> mm -hmm. sort of meeting and mashing in, in the middle. And then the other thing I noticed pretty much right away was just the attention to detail. And it seems like every piece of the boat, kind of like that old school mentality, like every single piece of the boat is either going to be functional or have a purpose or it's, you know, we're not going to just throw a bunch of no. stuff. No, no. And, and see... One of the things that I've learned about being in the boat business is men, I hope I can say this without being too um, feminist, I guess. I, I don't know if that's what I want to say, but uh, men generally come shopping for a boat, but the wife or the girlfriend has the final say so. Of course. I, I mean, see that's, my house. I, I mean, even, you know. There's sometimes where I'll look at boats and my wife picks up on certain things and I'm, I'm starting to learn those things. And I think if a marketer could figure it out, they'd yep. make a lot of money somewhere. Yep. But the, there's certain details and aspects of a boat where when I'm fishing, I don't really care how certain things are presented. Or um, if I'm you know, running somewhere, if it's appointed in a particular form or fashion, it definitely, there are certain uh, aspects of it that I think I'm just, again, my mind's going a million miles an hour, and also I just don't pay attention to certain details and certain aspects of the boat that uh, other folks do. And my wife is, and our family is definitely that way where she p points out certain things mm -hmm. like that. So. Well, see, that's where Kathy comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, Kathy, is a, her attention to detail is spot on. And the upholstery that, that we put in the boat, she designs all the upholstery, she, all the piping, all the pattern work and everything. Kathy does that. So she puts the, the woman twist to it. Mm -hmm. And with her bro. good looks yeah. as well, I will <laughs> yeah. say that, you know, yeah. our sister is a beautiful lady. Um, and her growing up with boats and her family, her children growing up in Wilmington on boats, she knows boating. Yeah. And so when you, you can combine all of that, it just it, it just fits. So what was the hardest part about getting going? I mean, you. you get the business going and stood up and, and all of those, you know, fun aspects of it. But as you look back and reflect back, are, are there points where it's like, that was amazing. I can't believe that connection or that thing helped me. Or is there any kind of struggling aspects of getting going that were really tough? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, there, there were struggles. Um, you know, you think what you perfect, prepare for doesn't happen in the way you prepare it. It never does. I mean, you know, I can relate back to horses, for example, or flying. What you prepare for doesn't happen. And in, in, in the family business, what we prepared for didn't happen. But it came to be through hard work, through dedication, through hours and hours of work, through uh, phone calls and follow-ups and, and visiting people just to, you know, to, to get it off the ground. But, yeah, it was hard. Which, I mean, you, you've sold boats for a long time. Yes. You know that side of the business. So I, I'm assuming the identifying customers and making that match aspect of it. I think there's a lot of great craftsmen out there that um, – might struggle sometimes getting that business aspect of it, which brother being in marketing, you having the sales background, the family just being able to utilize that. I've got to well, that yeah, that's true. See, one of the things, I think one of the things that, well, one of the beliefs that I have, I don't, I'm not going to say I think, but I believe, because we all grew up on the water and because we all fish and because we all hunt, we, if someone comes to us about a boat, we can talk it. We're not just salespeople. Our lifestyle is built around what we've created. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Which, when I mean, you grew up on the water, is there, I love to deep sea fish go offshore. Is there, you like inshore, offshore? Is it, inshore, I get sick. Do you? Yes. Which makes sense with your boats. Yeah. And uh, were you, on guides a lot when you were growing up, or were you guys always running that, just get on the boat, mom and dad, and rolling out and go? Get on the boat and go, get up, get ourselves and go. I mean, we were all running boats at 12 years old. I mean, we've taken boats out by ourselves. You know, there wasn't any law about ages or anything. And I mean, we would go, Kathy would even, uh, she would even borrow dad's boat while he was asleep and put it back in the same spot before he woke up. So. Um, we were always on the water, like I said earlier. What about today? Do you get to get out on the water much, or is it? Yeah, you know, yeah, fun yeah. Fishing or tournament fishing? Or uh, both. Yeah. You have a preference for one or the other? Um, fun fishing. Tournament fishing's pressure. Fun fishing out of where? Where's your favorite place to go? Fun fishing. Oriental. Oriental. Without a doubt. Yeah, which it. it I was uh, talking with one of our buddies over at the News Bay and Tackle, uh, down in that way. And uh, I remember joking with them, saying that it was crazy they named that place the sailing capital of Carolinas or however far they yeah. try to reach it out because the fishing down there is yeah. unbelievable. It's phenomenal. So it's but people are finding out about it. I mean, you know, and, and it's had some hard times lately there with the flooding, and um, but, but still. Any catches that come to mind? Of Yeah, lots. Um, my son and I, you know, we, we'd get in a school of trout and, in uh, not Dawson Creek, I can't think of the name of the creek now. Browns Creek, I'm gonna say Browns Creek. That's probably where we've caught some of the prettiest trout that um, that that I've ever caught. And then my nephew, I've been out with him a couple of times out around the bombing range and caught some pretty reds. So you know, we got some good memories down there. Awesome. I've seen a lot of people catch their first uh, puppy drum. Yeah. You know, so in the family, and that's that's always rewarding. What about as far as uh, the folks that are coming? Because now you've had you know several boats going out the door. It's not like you've only uh, had a couple, and, and that span of time has been incredible to see how many boats have been going out the door. Um, what do you? Is there a particular customer type that you're finding that you're really excited to build a boat for, or is it um, customer driving? Because you're not just this isn't a production boat; it's a custom boat. Right. You all have done some pretty crazy things. Uh, we have. With. A boat that's not this through the help of many it's, people. <laughs> yeah. Is there a particular customer profile that you're seeing that's either really resonating with the boat right now, or that you really enjoy building for? No, um, well, enjoy building them. Period. Everybody, but yeah, yeah, but but um, you know, we've had retired military to purchase. We have um, contractors that have purchased. We have timber guys in timber you know, in the timber business that have purchased uh, gas and oil companies. I mean, I really can't stereotype one person, but the ones that have bought have 
it, it, it's they too have been brought up in the fishing world and so they know boats in fact some of them when they look at the boat they go back in time and say you know my dad or my granddad and and and, and we smile because we yep that's what we, that's what we want that's what we wanted to hear and i've got to imagine it's pretty rewarding for someone to be able to be involved in the build process with you guys and be able to have i mean obviously you're you're running with um, making this thing come to life um, but you had a customer that was a fly fisherman right yeah and you know about him can, can you walk through that did you know process? about you knew well, about him I, you told me about it and i'd seen it and um yeah it's can you walk through how that kind of came to life I, yeah he saw it on instagram he's from um in um i think it was massachusetts mm -hmm. and, yeah and uh he saw one of our boats on Instagram, and he started just talking about it. And he said, well, I'm a fly fisherman. And he said, you really don't have any place to put fly rods, you know. And, and I said, well, how long are your fly rods? He said, well, you know, eight, nine foot long. He said, we saltwater fish for I mean, fly fish for stripers and, you know, blues and a few other fish. And he said, I just need something to put my fly rods in. And um, I said, well, let's go to work for you. Let's see what we can do. So he sent us a picture of one of his friends that was um, – a store-bought fixture, if you will, that his friend had installed on his boat. And we went to one of the low... All of our boats, all of our product is local, by the way. It's locally sourced, so it's not like we're going offshore or we're going to Mexico or we're going to South Carolina or, you know, it's all within 50, 60 miles of here, yeah. which is another reason why we like what we're doing. And so we went to a local business in Benson, North Carolina, and presented him, this is what we want to do, and he put it on a CAD machine and designed it, and we sent it to the customer. And the first thing he said was, no, that's not what I want. So we went back and redesigned it, and he said, yeah, that's what I want. And so my brother delivered the boat to him, and he went right in his house and got his fly rods and put them in. Of course, we got pictures of it, and then as happy as can be. Straight to it. And, uh, you know, he sent us pictures of his kids. I mean, for the first two months that he had the boat, you know, every week or every other weekend, we were getting pictures from him that, you know, of his family on the boat, on the beach. And, and, and that's rewarding because that's the customer, you know, that's really happy with his purchase. So that was, that was interesting. That yeah, was a, and not that that's a crazy request, but uh, probably not one you see every day, but are there, are there other things you guys have been asked for that you feel like are helping push you all to the next level right now? Or are you trying to innovate uh, within your boats already? Yeah, we are. We've got a couple of things that we're looking at right now, but you know, we've, we've gone from a notch transom boat and now we're putting Armstrong brackets on them with a closed transom. But the, uh, the main thing is the seating. It seems like right now people are looking for different seating and so the last boat that we built, we actually have a fold-down seat in the rear that is on a, a, a pinned hinge okay. that you can slide it and remove it entirely, or you can fold it forward to get to the build, or inside that seat is storage. So that's what people are looking at is storage, 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 and seating, seating, seating. And that boat will be headed up next week. When, and we're real excited about the seating and the way it was built and how it turned out. And then you've got one upstairs or outside that's growing upstairs, right? Yeah. I mean, that's that is that is a that was designed um, with the good help of a, a guy down east guy who actually purchased the boat. You know, and that's what we built it for, and he put his input in it, and we built it like he wanted it. And that we've had more comments and more compliments and more, I think. Uh, notifications on Facebook, Instagram, yeah. on that boat. So, pretty neat. and you don't see that a lot, you know, you don't see that a lot. And just coming up here today, a friend of mine it, it, who owns one of our boats, I, he wasn't a friend, but he's become a friend. He said he, he had seen the boat and he said, man, he said, you know, he, he fishes out of the Chesapeake and he said, I see these boats a lot. He said, but he said, man, they don't look anything like y'all do. And, you know, the tower boat in our world, in Rose Bay's world, is going to work really good on our boat simply for the fact that our dead rise isn't so steep, mm -hmm. so that it's not as tender. And, you know, you get, a, you get someone up top running that boat that's 230 pounds, 6 foot 4, mm -hmm. 240 so pounds, <laughs> you know, and get it into a side sea, you know, it's a pendulum effect. But with the 
bottom of our boat, it's not so tender. So it works great. Boat's built for it. Which is perfect. Yeah. Legacy. Yes. What, what, and I know you have a boat named that, but also beyond that, what do you, I mean, you guys have a strong base and we're early in, but are you, is there a guiding light that you have in your mind where you want to accomplish certain things and you have a goal shooting for, or are you just, are you all along for races and trying to, to, to well, out. our goal is, um, and the reason the legacy came about is because we feel that our family, our mother and father, the way they raised us, they gave us their legacy. They gave us their all. I mean, we didn't come from a wealthy family. We didn't come. My dad worked for the railroad. My mom worked at a bank for over 52 years. Yeah, don't see that anymore. You don't see it. And, you know, raising three children on a railroad uh, man's salary was difficult. So dad turned to crafts and furniture building and other things to, to substi you know, substitute the family income. So he left us a legacy. And, and my sister has become a craftsman. My brother has become a craftsman. I've become a craftsman in woodworking. I mean, we all do it. And, and he left that legacy to us. So what we're, when we sat down and formed Rose Bay, we want, yes, we want to build a nice boat that's receptive to the customers that are outside that are looking at our boat, that want our boat. But we also want to leave our children a legacy. And that's the, why we have the name Legacy. So there's two, Legacy and the God series. But, but the Legacy is what we're, you know, we're, we're built around. Now, I'm, overall, it's been uh, amazing to start to work with you guys and engage with you all and, and the entire family you get it right and, mm -hmm. and i think that that's one of the things about this industry in this space is how much of a familial tie there are with a lot of these builders and then also the community as a whole correct seems to really uh, embrace everybody really well and, and, and work together and um, i've noticed from the outside that you guys have been nothing but a charm to work with and, and a great family so it's been a pleasure to get to know you guys um, and we, you know, and when we say family, when I say family, you know, yes, it's, it's two brothers and a sister. Um, and when my dad died, I got to throw this in because you'll, you'll get the gist of it. But when my dad died, the preacher, you know, each one of us sa had to, something to say about dad's mm -hmm. legacy. And the preacher introduced us as Roy, Kathy, and Fred. And he said, Kathy is a rose between two thorns meaning me and my brother were the thorn, but my brother's the bigger thorn than I am, even though I'm the oldest. I'm going to put that out there so he'll get a <laughs> kick out of it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of family members that are behind the scenes that we don't, you don't see. You know, our, our niece, my niece is involved, Louise, she's involved very heavily. My wife is involved very heavily. You don't see her posted anywhere. Um, Kathy's husband, you know. It takes a village, right? It does. It takes the village. But it's, it's, it was our three, us three, that had came up with this concept and this dream and this business and this format. But it takes the whole entire family to make it work. So really one of the last questions I want to ask, um, and I appreciate all the stories you've been telling too, but what's, what's next for, for you all, and not in the sense of some incredible change, but um, when I ask that, what's next? What kind of comes to mind for you? Well, we're changing every, it seems like we're changing every month. We always find something a little different to do. Um, but I would love to get to a stable platform to where, you know, we are a custom boat builder, and, you know, there's so many things you can do to mm -hmm. the boat. But I think the next challenge that we're going to face that we that uh, that that we're steering in that direction we have a 23 foot i think we're going to go to a 20. i think that'll be our next um achievement it should be exciting to see wow i um i appreciate the time thank you and the conversation thank you we'll be seeing you at the boat show and uh it's i, I just i think it's it's awesome what you guys are doing it is that boat style and everything's just a, it's different and it has all the things that you could want and need out of a boat, but it's got just something a little bit different. So it's, it's been awesome for us to have the opportunity to, 
to be a part of what y'all are doing and, and hopefully keep watching it go like uh, hockey stick. Well, that's our dream. Keep killing it. Well, I got a story for you, too, that What's involves that? boat builders, trading uh, company. Hopefully only good things. Very good things. <laughs> About two weeks before Christmas, I get a phone call. Uh -huh. And you know, with all these robo calls going on around here, this call, that, you know, it's not in my phone. So, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't, it just had a number and it said United States. So yeah. I said, man, it's got to be a robo call. So I just picked the phone up and said, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. And this sweet little voice said, um, is this Fred Page with Rose Bay Boats? And I said, Yes, it is, and I'm so sorry I answered the call that way. I didn't recognize your phone number. Well, my husband was born in Rose Bay, and we were at Cary Town Center. Is mm -hmm. that the name of it? Uh, well, and maybe Triangle Town Center. Triangle Town, yep. town Center. There's we were in too. Triangle Town, town Center, mm -hmm. and someone had a T-shirt on that said Rose Bay Boats, and he fell in love with it. And I don't know anyone to call. She said, I came, on, came home and, and Googled Rose Bay Boats. Your number popped up. Can you help me? That's an amazing small world. And I said, we are Rose Bay Boats. We do not have the T-shirts, mm -hmm. but here's the number to order from. Yeah. So hopefully she did. But they saw your product. Mm -hmm. wow. Not my product, your no. product. It's, it's, uh, it, it can't, one can't happen without that. That's true. That's the magic of this all thing. It's perfect. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. It's good. But thank you, thank you. And we'll thank call you. it quits. Thank yes. you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely.